Every day, people spend hours using their cell phones, watching videos, browsing social media, and listening to music. We've become so integrated with technology that without it, we feel empty, like we're missing a limb. If an alien civilization visited Earth, would they be able to tell where our organic selves end and where our machines begin? The definition of a cyborg is a person whose physiological functioning is aided by or dependent upon a mechanical or electrical device. Are humans already cyborgs? Whatever the case, as we continue to merge with technology, both literally and figuratively, how will that affect what it means to be human? This is on one of my uh, uh, major projects, uh, Deep Tutor. It's an intelligent tutoring system for um, for high school physics. If you compare right now uh, a human nowadays with a cell phone, uh, with a human, an average person 100 years ago, today's average person looks like a superhuman. In computer science, we have this famous Turing test where you put a human and the computer behind a, a wall, and then you have another person interviewing the two. And if the interviewer cannot distinguish who's the machine and who's the human, then we pass what we call the Turing test, which means we could develop such a, an intelligent machine that is as good as a human. If you did this test 50 years ago, as compared to today, today's human with a cell phone and access to the World Wide Web will look like a superhuman. For instance, uh, if I'm behind a wall and you ask me uh, all sorts of questions about the world, I can easily search on my phone. I can multiply numbers that are 10 digits long. Uh, I can give you the answer in like seconds. Uh, if uh, a person 100 years ago could do that, he would be classified like a savant or super smart. I actually think that, that maybe the biggest effect of technology more generally uh, is uh, the way it has fractured our attention. There's about 200 different things I could look at on my phone whenever I want to distract myself. Uh, and, you know, our, our work is often not scheduled in a regular fashion. People don't read anything really very long as much as they used to, I think. And so it, it, uh, it changes the way we interact with the world when we're constantly kind of multitasking on some level. If we think of the computing devices, the new phase we are looking at is wearable device, Internet of Things, and other technologies they are bringing in is that how we look at data. And now computers are becoming embedded in the environment. So there is a lot of computer interact without even realizing they are computer. So I think this is what will change future tremendously. Essentially, the way we use machines has altered our brains. We no longer need to memorize certain facts, we can simply look them up. But this reliance on technology means not only do we have more information at our fingertips, our very ability to retain memories is being outsourced to something external. This has profound implications for how cultures will develop in the future. Not only will our day-to-day -day interactions be impacted, but so will the way we approach business, education, and other areas. As our technology continues to advance, though, what if there was a way to put the process of memorization back inside our bodies? The process of using implantable machines to enhance one's senses is called transhumanism. It's a budding segment of society that some futurists predict will grow significantly in the coming decades. Of course, implantable devices are very risky and often considered taboo. Some believe going down this road, receiving cybernetic upgrades to enhance our biology, will inevitably lead to a fracturing of humanity. But based on what we know, aren't humans already cyborgs? Even right now, you can make an argument that we are not pure humans anymore, right? And uh, we are enhanced by all sorts of devices uh, that augment our cognition, not all our, our uh, physical abilities. Yeah, I mean, we are cyborgs in the sense that uh, uh, we live in this uh, augmented reality right now, and then of course we're gonna have virtual reality. Um, 
and uh, yeah, we have all those prosthetics that you can call them, both at the cognitive level and physical level that uh, can help us. Uh, the thing that people a hundred years ago could only dream of. Uh, uh, so we, in a way, are cyborgs, and we're going to be more and more cyborgs. My definition is you got to have something like implanted. Uh, um, short of that, it's not a cyborg. It's some sort of, uh, you know, like uh, exoskeleton or something like that, which I don't think of as cyborging. I, I think of that as, you know, a tool that you're wearing. A lot of sci-fi movies that we see, uh, those are interesting to, uh, for a viewer, for a for a recreational purpose, but science is trying to make these to aid humans, not necessarily convert humans to something else. So from that point of view, I would say that uh, cyborg is probably still fantasy, and uh, I don't see any foreseeable future that cyborg will be important, but there might be extreme cases, like for example, warfare. In those cases, uh, enhancement, like with the wearable and other technology might be of interest, but not regular daily life use. You know, there's always going to be this financial sort of thing where, you know, if you get into the cyborging, well, it's going to be expensive, uh, and you're, you're always going to be trying to compete with the Joneses because somebody's going to have, you know, the Tesla and somebody's going to have the Pinto. And so do you want to get into that and be, you know, buy in at the bottom of the line on, on, the, on the cyborging just to be part of the uh, culture? I don't know. I wouldn't. Uh, I like I like all sorts of things like that. But you know, I want to I want to have one that really works really good or not at all. The implantable sensors is very uh, complicated because it has to uh, take care of the different possibility of issues that might lead to like infection and other things. On the other hand, wearable sensors will expand faster, much faster, maybe in exponentially. Implantable will be probably still be in more niche area but wearable probably will be more acceptable to general public. Despite the popular conception in science fiction, implantable devices may not become as widespread as some like to think. The monetary and cultural barriers to this adoption will probably prevent humans from changing who we are on a fundamental level. It may be harder to maintain our sense of self in a world where everyone is enhanced. Although enhanced could mean different things to different people, it's worth considering the potential dangers of cybernetic upgrades. I mean, there is always new tools that give you uh, uh, enhanced powers. Mm -hmm. Some could do damage with those new tools, some, some could uh, just use them for fun and for good. So, uh, yeah, clearly uh, we want superpowers to solve more complex problems. On the other hand, uh, those superpowers could be used for you know, bad uh, deeds and well that's where we need the regulation and you know, need to be careful of who can use those superpowers. There's a lot of reasons to do it and not do it and so I think there's going to be a subculture that does it. Just like you occasionally see a goth nowadays you're going to occasionally see a cyborg. Obviously all technologies has positive and negative side. Uh, if we look at the positive side and we want to we want to uh, encourage the positive side more, then this can be a tremendous benefit to the humanity. Transhumanism may, indeed, be the very next step in human evolution, or it could just be another fad. The effects technology will have on society and the human body can be observed now in their infancy. Technology helps us move things, build things, and create things faster than we've ever been able to. But when it comes to changing who we are as a species, well, that's still to be determined. Transhumanism is a very complex topic to broach. We've only scratched the surface today, and there are numerous books and movies that tackle the subject and pose similar ethical questions. What we can know for sure, though, is that the kinds of breakthroughs we will see in this century will be unlike any other in human history.